Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm talking with Megan McAvoy, a national speaker and HuffPost blogger who inspires women in business to achieve personal well-being, business success, and financial security. Her story inspires others to live their truth and strive for personal fulfillment. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. I'm to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so cool. Yeah. We got the chance to sit sit down together um, a few months ago one-on-one. -on -one, yeah. And we had a really great conversation. And one of the things that you shared with me was super powerful. It was the story of basically how you got here today. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to share that for our audience. Sure. So I have been in personal finance for my entire career. I mean, I started with Fidelity as an undergrad and sort of started climbing the corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. um, in 2008, in the stock market tanked. <laughs> I lost my job three weeks after buying a condo mm -hmm. and was put into this situation where I was like, how am I gonna pay my bills? And what am I gonna do? Like mm -hmm. major anxiety. And I built a business uh, as a financial advisor starting in a depression for seven years and I built a national client base of female entrepreneurs. I get to travel. I was bi-coastal living in San Francisco in the winters. And I had all of the trappings of success. Right. You know, um, I come from an industry that is mostly male-dominated and most of the men in that industry were twice my age. And at the firm, they kept telling me, you're gonna be the future of our firm. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna be one of the first women ever in leadership within a financial institution. Whoa. Yeah, it was cool, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the reality was, was that I wasn't happy. You know, I had a really strong purpose for why I did the work that I did, and it was my mission for a reason. But I came to this realization that as much as I believed in the products and the services that I did, and I was really aligned to the value, mm -hmm. I myself wasn't fulfilled. Right. And part of the reason was because I sold insurance products. And at the end of the day, when you sell life insurance <laughs> and disability insurance, you don't want to see anybody use it. Because that's obviously... Yes. Yeah. You don't think about that part. You don't. And as you're going along and fulfilling this mission and you're helping people take care of their financial well-being and their family, yeah. but then you have this realization of, I don't ever want to see the fruit of my labors manifest. Oh. It was like, oh there's something more for me. And I had been through a number of personal tragedies in my own life. Like my first week in college, 9-11 happened out my bedroom window. And I had- insane. Yeah. I had textbook post-traumatic stress disorder. And they wanted to put me on every sort of, you know, medication and handle it the traditional way. And when I transferred schools, my mom gave me my first yoga mat. And I actually learned to heal myself from the inside out. So instead of just looking at, you know, the symptoms and addressing what was going on, mm -hmm. I went inside and we made the leap, my boyfriend and I, to move to Colorado. Um, it was around this time last year <laughs> that I was Ooh -hoo. letting my clients know <laughs> that I was gonna be leaving my business um, and I was gonna be doing what truly made me happy mm -hmm. and what truly filled my soul. And what I do is I help clients with that resilience work. So if there's something going on that's holding them back from their greatness, I help them clear out those past stories and I help them step into who they're truly capable of being. Mm -hmm. And now I watch my clients change in a week. I watch my clients change in a month. And the women that they are a year down the road when we've been working together, it is completely different. And wow. for me, there is nothing that fills me up more. Like I feel it in my belly, you know, like those butterflies that, <laughs> wow, like I had this impact on somebody and I taught them the tools that I've learned my entire life in mm -hmm. order to create and step into the life that they desire and quite frankly, that they deserve. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. So you talked about how yoga was one of the things that helped you heal. Do you use yoga or encourage people to use yoga in their path? So, I love yoga, <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a, a great inward kind of practice of self-discovery, and when we have challenging things that happen in our life, they impact us not only on a mental level, but also on an emotional level. And the thing that's amazing about yoga is it helps to clear out the emotional impact as you're mm -hmm. doing the mindset work and find space between those cycling thoughts. Yeah. 
I don't necessarily in the coaching that I do now, you know, put people on the mat. Yes. <laughs> but what I do is I take those lessons of, you know, self-compassion, overcoming ego, having true purpose, alignment, and I bring those core values that I have from yoga mm -hmm. and I apply it to the coaching that okay. I do. Beautiful. I love that. Um, one of the things, one of the major lessons that I learned from watching the videos that you do and following you is this concept of personal fulfillment, and you talked about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us what it really means to find personal fulfillment, and you know why is it so important to you? Because life is short. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to answer the why is it so important. Like when you go through something like 9-11 during your most formative years, yes. you learn this lesson at a very young age that life can change like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know we just bought our dream home in the mountains in 45 days. It's gorgeous. Into, thank you. <laughs> 45 days into being there, we were evacuated in a wildfire. You know, yeah. there's so many variables that come into our life, and it's one of these things when we study impermanence, you know, Di I always love this statistic. Dinosaurs were around 350 million years ago. We're on this earth for a short blip, and it's like you only get one chance. Yes. And what are you going to make of this life? And all of these fears like uh, that people have or these limiting beliefs, you can't let those get in the way of what truly matters to you. You mm -hmm. know, like we went to Tony Robbins. I know you were there yes. in February, and that was like one of the most amazing things I've ever been to. And he talked about that. He's like, you can't give your happiness away cheaply. Oh, and people, I love that. right? That and was such a good quote. Yeah. People do, where they, you know, let other people's thoughts about them impact them or these fears that they have. And so I think for me, the biggest piece of fulfillment or that goes into fulfillment is mm -hmm. actually defining your life's purpose. And so my clients, when they work with me, they end up leaving with a very clearly defined life's purpose. Mm -hmm. Because how many people kind of walk through life and they're like, there's that thing. <laughs> yeah. I just can't reach it. I'm not sure why I'm not totally fulfilled in my life. Uh -huh. And it's because most people haven't done the work to align to what their true purpose is. And then once you have your real why in life, then figuring out how best can you manifest that. But that takes work. <laughs> yeah, know? I was just sitting here thinking, well, where would I get started? How do I find that? Yeah. I had a client who I've been working with for about a year, and she's really moving from a toxic situation. Like, pretty much every limiting situation that could hold somebody back, okay. this woman has it, okay. right? But she has defined her life's purpose in the work that we're doing together, and what she's found is that the more she moves towards that, everything else comes into alignment. Whether it's the man, the mm -hmm. career, the finances, the health, it all comes from having an actual defined purpose. And for me, I've had the same life's purpose for five years. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like that like um, light on the dashboard mm -hmm. in that, you know, if your brakes are not okay, there's a light that's going to come on. And you say, okay. okay, I need to go do some work here. It's the same thing when you have a life's purpose. If there's something happening in your life and it's not right, uh -huh. there's going to be a light on the dashboard. And that's oh. when you can begin to say, is this in alignment with my core values? Is this in alignment with who I truly want to be? Because most people start from the inside out. They go, I want to have this, <laughs> you know, the big house, the mm -hmm. success, the, the, stuff, the stuff, the representations of yeah. that success that they're craving. Right. And then they say, what do I have to do in order to have that stuff? Mm -hmm. And then they become whoever they become along the way. So what I do with my clients and the work that I've done personally is I look at who do I want to be? Yeah. And then okay. what do I have to do in order to have what I want? That's a big difference. That's a big difference in mindset to have. It's a huge difference. And you have to overcome the ego in mm -hmm. a lot of spaces when you start doing that work because the ego is what's going to pull you out of alignment and away from your kind of divine inspiration, for lack of a better way to say it. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of pieces that you have to really address when you're finding your purpose. Um, and you gotta dig deep. <laughs> it has yeah. to connect to you, because like I said, like I had a very well-defined purpose of why it was my mission in personal finance. There were some you know, tragedies that had happened in my own family that I said, okay, there's gotta be a better way. But when I realized that it wasn't fully serving who I wish to be, that came from a lot of hell. <laughs> from oh. the, I mean, really. The turmoil and the, yeah. the, probably a lot of the reflection after the turmoil helped you get there. Yeah. 
and the frustration and the just sitting there, like how many people mm -hmm. can look at their life with a truly brave heart mm -hmm. and not judge themselves and not, you know, compare themselves to others in order to step into who they want to be. That's hard. Yeah. And leaving my financial business, it was the whole like, what will people think? I'm, are they going to feel like I left them? Mm -hmm. And then taking the leap and moving across the country and launching my business once I got to a city where I know nobody, there were the fears of like, well, what if I don't make any friends? Oh. What if I fall on my face in a brand new city? Yeah. What if I don't earn the right to have any clients? And what I found is that the things that I was most afraid of didn't happen. So stop worrying about all this stuff because there's plenty of other stuff that will happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you got to address, you know, those pieces. So um, just run towards it. Beautiful. So clearly you're always living your life as a mentor to other people. So who are the mentors or the people that you look to in your life, whether or not you have in real life sort of mentor people or if you have people that you look to such as a Tony Robbins you mm -hmm. know tell us a little bit about those people yeah so the biggest example for me is my dad mm -hmm. um, he to me is the definition of a man you know been married to my mom for 45 years raised four great kids if I can say so <laughs> um, you know was a marine went to Vietnam at a time when people were dodging the draft and so he really stood up for what he believed in and he always raised me even though I was the youngest of four that I could do whatever my older siblings were doing mm -hmm. and I could probably do it better and so he instilled this sort of belief system in me that I was capable wow. and that I could go out there and do it and when challenging things happen you can't run away mm -hmm. you have to keep going um, another one would be Wayne Dyer Oh, bless his soul. Right? <laughs> I love him. Yeah. I had just gone through a situation where I went through my yoga teacher training. My grandmother passed away, favorite woman who ever lived, and I totaled my car the night before her funeral. And I just so happened to come home after teaching yoga one day and turned on a PBS special. Where, like, this doesn't happen. Like, this was all, like, synchronicity. Like, yeah. <laughs> and Tony Robbins, uh, not Tony Robbins, Wayne, Wayne Dyer, Dyer yeah. was t on TV talking about synchronicity and how there's no coincidences in your life oh my gosh we were just talking about that did you see it no but we were just talking about that. <laughs> synchronicity of course yeah oh my gosh and there really are no coincidences and so when that situation happened that my grandmother passed away I totaled my car which is pretty major and Wayne Dyer came walking into my life I was like that's it yeah I need better than this my life has to be better than this. Um, my yoga teacher, you know, I went through a yoga teacher training that wasn't just, here's how you do yoga on a mat. It was very much like the mind, the soul, the mm. spirit. Um, Tony Robbins. Not just the stretching part of things. Yeah. yeah, the stretching the mind part of things. Yeah. And Tony Robbins is where, you know, this February, my mantra that my mission is always to provide a level of value that exceeds expectations came mm -hmm. from. Because so he was set to speak from 3 to 6 p.m. Yeah. The man went till 8 p.m. I know. We were there forever. <laughs> right? But, but we didn't stop. I never even got up to pee. No. He, <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't leave we either. We were like moving and jumping. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, in my industry, there's so many coaches out there. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a situation where they're a dime a dozen. Yeah. And I went and I saw somebody like Tony Robbins. And... He's a multi-billionaire. He did not need to go for two extra hours. No. But he's so in alignment with his purpose. He's so in alignment with his core values. He's so in alignment with his mission that that's when for me it was like, I need to be like that. I can't accept status quo in my business. I can't mm -hmm. accept status quo in the results that my clients are getting. They need to know if they're going to hire me. The results they're going to get are well beyond what they paid for. Um, and then I have my coach. You know, I've had the same coach for five years. Um, I rehired him when I moved out here. He was one of the first people to come visit me. Aww. Yeah. That's a good coach. Yeah, it's a real good coach. And um, he's a huge example for me because, you know, he's the one who helped me to find my life's purpose. He's the one who helped me to create my how I live through my life's purpose. 
and he does that. You know, I rehired him and my boyfriend, I was like, is that cool with you? Like, I'm h hiring yet another person for my <laughs> business. And he's like, you know what, Megan, when you work with him, you're happier. And they get a chance to meet. So it was kind of bringing two people in my life together that I'm like, that's an example. And part of my life's purpose is to be an example mm -hmm. for others. You have to follow the people who are doing that. Beautiful. Yeah, he's here. No, oh. <laughs> that's so sweet, <laughs> right? I mean, supportive, that's super supportive. I yes, mean, it's nice to to have that and to be. You know what else though is to be able to ask for that. Uh -huh. You know, I think sometimes as as a as a woman to be able to be like, hey babe, could you come out and support me in this like thing? It's not always easy to do that, but yeah. when you know that you have a partner that you can say, I'd really love if you were there and in my corner. That's a mentor in a way, you know, like yeah. be who you want to be in a relationship. And that comes down to another thing I teach, which is those core values. What's important to you? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now, I know there's a lot of people that when I said that you're a HuffPost blogger, <sighs> they were like, how did she get to do that? How do I get to become one? Uh, so they probably have questions. Yeah. What does it take to become a HuffPost blogger? I mean, clearly you have a lot of great lessons to share. But if they want to follow in your footsteps, Aww. what do they have to do? So I wish I had this great big fancy answer for that. <laughs> um, I went to this huge women's conference that they do in Boston each year. Huh. And Ariana Huffington was one of the keynote speakers. Oh. And what you have to do to follow in my footsteps is ask. Right? So when an opportunity is, is presented, mm -hmm. ask if you can be considered and so when Ariana was like hey do you you know to the audience at large uh -huh. thousands of women do you want to blog for the Huffington Post I was like came on yeah, yeah. I do so I sent her an email oh, and nice. Ariana Huffington I sent her my email and my blog uh -huh. um, and I said I want to I want to write for you I've been blogging for them for three four years now what get out of here email Ariana Huffington yeah, <laughs> right <laughs> Wow, okay. Which, which who would have thought, but like if somebody presents you, if you get presented, and I think this happens too often, mm -hmm. people get presented opportunities in their life, yeah. and they just kind of roll past them. Well, you would automatically turn it down and say, okay, well, she said that, but she didn't mean it for me. Right, and so that's what I mean, ask. She meant that for me. Yeah. <laughs> I want to write. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and that has given me, you know, what I try to do in my writing is be very authentic. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell genuine stories that have emotion and connect with my audience. And I'm telling you right now, I have had clients from blogs literally come to me and be like, I'm your client. Wow. I need to work with you. And so, again, if you're given the opportunity or the platform, take it. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things I teach my clients, too, is it's like if you have a chance to speak and you're scared, we'll get you past that. Okay. <laughs> get on the stage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that was ask. a great lesson. Just ask. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's a Wayne Gretzky quote, I think. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there's one of them. Just, just ask, and you shall receive. And if you don't receive, then maybe it wasn't the right thing. All right, Ariana, you're going to have a lot of emails coming, <laughs> just so you know, because I know you watch my show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you to watch. She should. I'm going to ask her to watch the show. Right? <laughs> she should. <laughs> All of the women of Denver will become HuffPost bloggers. Do it. It's cool. It's a fun outlet. And it looks good. I mean, I don't, I don't come from that ego space where I'm like, look at me, I blog for the HuffPost. But it looks good. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> looks good on a resume. Yeah. It's great exposure. Absolutely. Yes. I agree. So what is the one big lesson you want everyone to take away from the story that you've told and your journey? and the things that you teach, give us one major thing to take away from this conversation. Yeah, so I knew I was gonna be asked to this one and I have a couple of them, but I think the one that stuck with me the most is run towards your fear. Mm. Just, you know, like the, the brain is not built for our happiness. It's not built for our success. Evolution is actually designed to keep you stuck. <laughs> because there used to be a time, right, where we were literally yeah. running from, like, animals in order to survive. Yeah. And the human form has evolved, <laughs> but does it mean that our brain has? No. And so the emotional epicenter of our brain, which is the amygdala, is the oldest part of our brain. And all fear is, is an emotion. 
So when people allow fear to keep them stuck, they're becoming an emotional puppet in a sense where their mindset is so much stronger that it can overcome that fear. And each time that I've kind of run towards that fear, mm -hmm. it's been amazing. You know, it's been, you know, kind of like the PTSD thing. We, we run from that which will transform us the most. Because when we go yeah. that deep in our mindset work, it becomes really scary. Like, if you think I wanted to spend any time with my thoughts at that point in my life, mm. not really, you know? And I went on this trip to um, California in one of my many, you know, bi-coastal adventures. And I went to Big Sur, which if you've ever been there, it's so beautiful. But you have no cell phone reception. Oh, no. no. Right? No, I'm not going to visit there. <laughs> no, but it's find me so there. beautiful. <laughs> and nobody knew where I was. And the night before, I had been at this wine tasting. And so there's this sommelier who's like heavily pouring me the Pinot Noir. I'm like, this uh -huh. is fun. And he tells me about this hike in Big Sur. And I'm like, okay, I'll go. But then I get there and there's this sign, beware of bobcats and mountain lions, do not hike alone. And nobody knows where I am. So this huge part, of, no, I'm not condoning this. My mom would be so mad. Yeah, no <laughs> cell phone yeah, yeah, yeah. plus so, bobcats. So be smart, okay? I did a Boy Scout and he's like, thank <laughs> God you're alive. But um, I ended up being so scared that I ran. And so it was only a mile, so I just, I ran. And then I got to this private beach in Big Sur. And in Big Sur, if you've never been, it's where the mountains hit the ocean. And it's oh. so beautiful. And to find yourself on this private beach is just one of those, like, seriously magical moments in my life that I was like, had I turned around, I'd never have this experience mm -hmm. and this experience was worth everything so i mean that's sort of an analogy for running towards your fear but what yeah. i always tell people is don't miss your private beach whatever that is in your life run you know be safe okay yeah be safe <laughs> <laughs> but but wow. run because you don't know and, and that's sort of one of the things too that it's like what's around the corner so mm -hmm. if you're going through something that's really, really hard or scary or you feel stuck, mm -hmm. just keep going because it's over there. Yeah. But when you turn around and you go the other way, you're never going to make it. Oh, yeah. Wow. You've given me about three or four big aha moments. I've just been sitting here taking it in going, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, reflecting <laughs> on, you know, my personal journey and what I really think and feel. And, you know, th so this was this has been a really great conversation for me. I hope it was for everybody oh, else. Thank you. So thank you so much for sharing so much and for the authenticity that you shared today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. It was fun. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and my guest, Megan McAvoy. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.